Hello, and welcome to episode 8 of the Watership Down podcast, which will cover chapters 10 and 11, The Road and the Common and Hard Going. First of all, some housekeeping. Uh, In the last episode, I referred briefly to Speedwell waking up Acorn to look at the thorn from Pipkin's paw. It was actually Hawkbit waking up Speedwell only. I allowed the pairing of Speedwell and Acorn from the departure episode to um, confuse me for a moment. I've got a language note after last week's episode as well. Um, Big Wig's phrase, Uemblia Ra, meaning you stinking chief from later in the book, suggests a more complex meaning of the word U, um, possibly meaning you as well as the, depending on context. This just complicates rabbit grammar even further. In the context of Big Wig's poem, it means the, although he maybe is saying you stinking thousand, although that's not how it's translated in the book. Last week, I also missed discussing the word emblia in my analysis of Big Wig's poem. It's been pointed out to me. Um, it's a word second only to chraka in its wonderfulness, and it means stinking. And the word makes you make a face of disgust if you say it right. It's a great word, so I'm sorry I missed that out. Now, there were some strange clicks at the start of last week's episode. Um, not sure why this was. Also, if you listen carefully, one of our cats made a brief contribution in the background. <laughs> Don't mind that so much. On this topic, you may have noticed already, I'm adding musical bumpers to the podcast from today. They have to be open source, so to avoid so as to avoid copyright issues. But I think I've chosen four appropriate ones. But let me know if they offend your ears too badly. Uh, obviously, obviously, if everyone says they do, then they will go. There's a very interesting discussion of the book, the whole book, in the latest episode of the Reddit Twice podcast on Spotify. It's episode two of Reddit Twice. I haven't included the link because it's quite long, but you, if you go on Spotify, you will find that. It's read it twice, as in R-E-A-D, it twice. And it's episode two. Um, I've given them a shout out, and I think they're going to be giving me a shout out as well. Um, I've listened to the whole episode. Great discussion, very wide ranging, and actually told me some things I I didn't know already, which is fantastic. They look at a book per episode, I believe. I'm going to be following that, definitely. Um, I now have potential leads for three discussions with other fans of the book, which is exciting. I'm up for discussing any theory about allegories in the book at all. The more the merrier. Although I'm going to avoid politics myself, mostly. A bit difficult when it comes to Ephrafa. Um, I'm up for any political theory about the book from anyone else. So th- that'd be great. Um, if it causes controversy, that's fine. That's what a podcast should be about. There is also now a link in the podcast description if you'd like to leave a voice message for possible use in the podcast. That can be done. Obviously, it wouldn't be appropriate for longer discussions. That There's a proper way of linking uh, two people together to do an extended discussion. But if you want to leave a voice message, feel free. And the link there is https colon forward slash forward slash, obviously, anchor.fm forward slash forward slash watership down forward slash message. If you want to leave a message, that could be included in a future episode. So, on to chapter 10, The Road and the Common. Now, the opening quote is from The Pilgrim's Progress, and it introduces the idea of resistance to going any further as dangers seem to increase, which is is going to become a bit of a theme. The rabbits stay in the bean field for most of the day resting. They take it in turn staying on watch. Adams describes very well how the rabbits sense the passing of time. As the sun sets, they have a scare as a beetle on Pipkin makes Hazel think for a moment he may have died. But he's fine. So far, so good. No rabbits have died. Suddenly, there's a the sound of a gunshot. The rabbits scatter by instinct, running towards holes that don't exist. This shows that their instincts still kick in. There's danger, they will leave their cover in panic, but there are no more gunshots. It takes a while for them to gather again, and they set off against the, across the pasture. Hazel sees a hoodoo on the other side of a hedge. Hoodoo is a car, wonderful word, imitating the sound of cars, particularly at the time this was written, about 50 years ago. Now, all he can see, obviously, is this thing rushing by. He worries it might be a danger, because he's not aware of the existence of roads, which, of course, hoodoo have to stick to. Bigwig and Hazel go ahead to the road, and Bigwig, who's in the in the Owlsler at the Old Warren, apparently, obviously, he explains 
what shrewd do are, sorry, rather what roads are and how shrewd do stay on them. He says they're harmless as long as you leave them alone, except at night. So as long as you stay off the road, you're fine. Now the road referred to, and I've posted a picture of this on the Facebook group, Water It Ship Down Fans Facebook group. Um, the road referred to is the B4640 between Newtown and Newtown Common. And I think I found the right stretch of the road. A big wig sits on the edge of the road as a car passes to demonstrate how harmless they are. But Blackberry is checking the road out and comes across a dead Yona, or hedgehog. It's been squashed by a car, and that's quite gruesomely described. Bigwig points out that this must have been on the road at night. That's when hedgehogs are out and about. And at that time, Hrududu have bright lights that draw animals towards them. That's the only time they're a danger. they are dangerous. But these lights have some kind of magical quality almost to them. Hazel points out it is nearly night time and they should get across the road quickly. By moonrise, they've reached Newtown Churchyard, and from there they climb a hill to reach Newtown Common, which is a very alien environment to them. The thick plant life is unfamiliar, and they make slow progress. Distant sounds carry here, and everything seems to tell of danger. Near moonset, Hawkbit approaches Hazel. He said they, says they've gone far enough, and they need to stop. Speedwell and Acorn back him up. They think things are just getting worse the further they go. Now, by stop, they mean stop for good, stop the journey, stop here. In the middle of this place, in this common that is so alien to them, doesn't seem like a very good idea. Hazel tries to reassure them that this is, this is it's just this place that's making them feel that way and that things will get better. Now, Hawkbit says he doesn't think Hazel knows where they are going. He didn't, for example, know about the road. He's got a fair point there. They then say outright they want to go back to the Warren. Hazel points out this is impossible as they wounded an owl's officer, Captain Holly. That would be ridiculous to do. Fiverr and Bigwig approach at this point. Fiverr wants to talk to Hazel, while Bigwig intends to have a go at the three rebellious rabbits. Fiverr and Hazel climb a small rise and look south, saying nothing at first. And the Downs, which includes Watership Down, obviously, are mentioned for the first time in the book. They're four miles away and the wind in the trees of Watership Down is described almost as if Fiverr can hear it. Fiverr suddenly says that that is where they need to go, and explains why very well. Now, living north of Downs as I do, I, I can see the Downland Ridge from my uh, living room window, and it's you can see this continuous ridge along the horizon. It's a, it's a wonderful sight. To Hazel, the idea of getting to the Downs is absurd, though. They're far too far away. When he says this to Fiverr, though, Fiverr goes into a trance-like state as if he hasn't heard him. He says there is a mist between them and the hills that they will have to go through. A mist that feels like being deceived. A danger that he can't define. Very eerie passage. They can hear Bigwe coming to an end of his talking to, and, and Fiverr seems unaware of what he has just said. Hazel reassures Fiverr he will look after him. He seems to be trying to make sure Fiverr doesn't say things like he has just said in front of the others, but he wants to hear them, perhaps. Fiverr's just explained why they need to get there very well. A high, lonely place you know, with dry soil where you can smell and hear things all around, as he said earlier. That's where they need to be. He knows that what Fiverr says contains important warnings. So then, on to chapter 11, which will cover the chapter called Hard Going, as well as the promised lost paragraph. Now, the opening quote from the Maud Arthur hints at coming through a hard journey through difficult terrain to better country, which is a little bit more optimistic than the last chapter. As Hazel and Fiverr get back to the others in the hollow, it becomes clear there's been real trouble between Bigwig and the three he was telling off. Blackberry fills them in. Hawkbit, after being threatened by Bigwig, has asked who is Chief Rabbit, which was followed by Bigwig biting him. This is why Bigwig shouldn't be Chief, as we'll see later in the book. Blackberry asks who is Chief Rabbit, and Hazel says he doesn't know, though Bigwig is the strongest. 
that's an important distinction. Really. <laughs> this is one of the central themes of the book. What is good leadership? Hazel blatantly should be leader. But in many Warrens, Big Week would be. Now, Hazel's comments about there having been no need to bite Hawkbit, as talking would have made it clear going back to the old Warren was not an option, really does demonstrate that he definitely, as I've said, should be chief. But as things stand, that question may be dangerously in the balance. Will they be led by fear of Bigwig or persuasion by Hazel? How would you prefer to be led in a group? Interestingly, at this point, Hazel refers to biting people. That's interesting. It's an interesting translation for whatever the laypine word is that he uses. He's basically referring to rabbits as people, that if you're the person speaking, then people is used to mean a, an animal of your own species if you're able to use language. Very interesting. Possibly a slip up in the writing, but I thought that was interesting use of the word people. This is a key moment for Hazel, as he promises them he will get them to better country by sunrise. And this is almost an act of desperation. He clearly knows the consequences of not doing so could be very serious. He refers to being torn apart. The fear and confusion of the continuing journey is very well described, with the rabbits str struggling widely and close encounters with an owl and the scent of a stoat. They're so separated that they are frightening each other when they approach others in the group, because rabbits don't travel naturally as a close-knit group. Only Pipkin stays close to Hazel, whose reassurance of Pipkin is as much for Hazel himself as anything. The first light of dawn appears, and we learn of Hazel's feelings of defeat and self-doubt, as they're not clear of this difficult terrain yet. He can now see the ridge of the downs clearly ahead. They seem closer. And suddenly, Blackberry exclaims from up ahead, He's done it! They've come out of the other side of the common. And they see Silver and Bigwig ahead of them. At this point, the text varies, depending on which edition of the book you read. And this, a major diversion from my taking you through the chapter, is the place of the lost paragraph that I mentioned previously. There is a lot more detail here than I can include in the published podcast notes, which have a 4,000 word limit. So I'm going to post my full notes on this to the Facebook page. In my 1978 copy of the book, paperback, Blackberry calls Hazel, Hazel Ra, at this point, or Chief. And Bigwig reacts by saying the day he calls Hazel that will be the day he stops fighting. This incident also occurs in the 1978 film. I, also, I always found it quite poignant, as Bigwig does indeed call him Hazel Ra later in the book when his fighting career does end. I'm sorry for the spoilers there. There aren't going to be spoilers here. I do assume you've read the book in this podcast. However, in many or most editions of the book, this incident is omitted completely. In the 2019 Peter Capaldi audiobook, which I'm using heavily in prepping for this podcast on the go, Bigwig just says, Splendid, Hazel, when they arrive, and the whole tension of the issue of leadership is avoided. Now, Rick Morris, who I met via the Facebook fans group, Warship Down fans group, I'm very grateful to for supplying me with this information, has told me that as well as the lost paragraph, there are also two alterations of Buckhorn saying Hazel Ra to Hazel in the book. We'll go into more detail on this when appropriate. So, which version of this incident appears in your copy? And where and when was your copy sold? And is it hardback or softback? I'm very interested in confirming the timeline of the removal of this paragraph. So to clarify, this is the end of um, at the end of them uh, them coming out of the common in chapter eleven. Just looking through my notes, um, I'm very interested in knowing: Does your copy include Hazel being called Hazel Ra and Bigwig saying Hazel Ra? The day I call him Hazel Ra, that'd be the day I stop fighting that will. Or does Bigwig just say Splendid? You're through the you're through the common. And the whole tension is diffused that way. Which version have you got? Because there's a very complicated timeline to which edition feeds forward into another, other editions after that and where they're published. So have a look in your copy or copies. Look at when, when it was printed and where it was printed and whether or not it's hard or softback. Is that passage in your copy? I'm very interested in going into a lot of detail in this. <laughs> Rick has told me that the paragraph is missing from his 1974 UK second edition hardback and his US first edition hardback. 
but it is in his 1976 illustrated edition hardback, and, as I said, it is in my 1978 paperback, printed in the UK. But it's missing from the 2019 Capaldi audiobook. It was originally removed from the second edition, published by Rex Collings, according to a 1998-2000 to 2000 Yahoo Groups post, which Rick saves a text of, um, but the Puffin Penguin paperback editions were based on the first edition hardback, which is why it isn't lost completely from subsequent versions. Are you following me so far? Rick also says, and I quote, quote, I'm sure that my first ever copy, the 1973 or possibly 1974 Puffin paperback, which completely disintegrated long ago, had the paragraph, as did my early Penguin paperback, which I was given in 1974, end quote. He also says the following about the audiobooks, quote, the 1976 Roy Detrice audiobook, which is heavily abridged, emits all text after Blackberry calls Hazel Chief Rabbit and resumes with them relaxing in the meadow just before Cowslip appears. The 1997 Andrew Sachs version, which I also have on cassette, includes one use of Hazel Ra by Buckthorn, but omits the lost paragraph, unsurprising as it's also a heavily abridged, abridged version anyway. Interesting that it's a Puffin audiobook, so it may be that the Puffin text was used for the reading. The 2010 Blackstone audio version, read by Ralph Cosham, follows the edited text. And I, that's end quote there. That was all from Rick. And I'll just add to that. I'll repeat for context that the 2019 Capaldi audiobook also follows the edited text. Now, unfortunately, we do not know the identity of the person who originally pointed out the omission in the 1998 to 2000 post on Yahoo Groups. And Yahoo Groups have now been deleted, obviously, so we can't look at that anymore. But the effect of the omission of that passage is effectively to remove any doubt that Hazel is the chief rabbit. I personally far prefer the underlying tension that is set up between Hazel and Bigwig, the strongest rabbit in the group. This tension is not resolved until the climax of the book, and Bigwig indeed does not call him Hazel Ra, as far as I am aware, until then. By removing this paragraph, Bigwig's lack of calling Hazel chief loses all meaning. As far as I'm concerned, the book is incomplete without it. I'm going to put it out there and state my view on that. As a result of Bigwig's put-down, Hazel privately realises that his contribution to crossing the common may not have been that great after all. I guess with Fiverr most of the time, just trying to pretend he's reassuring Fiverr when he's actually reassuring himself. Bigwig and Silver have made it out of the common ahead of him, and this can only reinforce this. But it is to Hazel's credit that he is capable of such self-reflection. So why was that paragraph edited out? What was the reasoning behind it? I can't find anything on this. It'd be fascinating to know. In any case, the chapter ends with the rabbits entering the thick grass of a meadow as the sun rises. They have made it through the common. <laughs> The next episode covers the beginning of the last six chapters of the end of part one of the book. These chapters cover that mist that Fiverr spoke of in trance when he first saw the distant watership down. It is a metaphorical mist that the group will have to get through before finding their new home. And you could say it is the most disturbing section of the book. <laughs>